Okay, you guys, the greatest thing of all time just happened to me. And if I reach over here, I can grab this while I explain that I was on my way to go to work and I decided to stop at one pawn shop thing because I remembered seeing a light meter there that I wanted to get. And then I went and then the light meter was broken. So then I went to a different place, which was called a curio shop, which was basically the same thing. And I found all this. This is a Polaroid. A Polaroid SX70 land camera that you can purchase on B&H and on eBay and stuff for four to five hundred dollars. This thing is in like pristine condition. Just needs to be cleaned up a bit. And I bought it for a whopping handsome, my hands in the way, $18. <gasps> so excited. So get ready for that using video that you're watching currently. I cannot believe I just spent almost $50 on 16 frames. <laughs> there she is boys and ladies <laughs> all cleaned up all sticked all spanned screwed up a little bit because i accidentally washed off the writing that was here sure that drops the resale value but i mean it's so pretty look how pretty also can i get in here can i get all up in that can i can i Oh, oh, nope. Oh my god, it's so pretty. I will, I do need to find my super glue to fix this little part here. Look how pretty. Now, what I'm gonna, I just spent almost $50 on two packs of film, which only have eight shots each. And I know what you're thinking. What the heck is that noise? That's my 3D printer. I'm printing a camera. Don't worry. You'll see soon. <laughs> uh, uh, also, this is 600 film, which this camera does not technically take. You're supposed to use SX70 film, but to do that, I would have had to order it online, and I'm an impatient boy. So I just went to Best Buy and picked up this. Because you can use this film. It's just... The film you're supposed to use with this is like ISO 125 or something like this. And this is ISO 600. So they're going to be super way brighter on this. So they recommend that you use a neutral density filter. But I haven't... I could not find any videos showing what happens if you use it without the neutral density filter. Which is why I bought two packs because I'm going to be uh when I take this out later I'm going to be experimenting to see what exactly the difference is because here you've got there's a plane going overhead and it's very loud here you've got basically a built-in neutral density filter you can uh have your pictures come out more overexposed or underexposed so why use a neutral density filter if it's basically got one built in? So, yeah. That's what I'll be testing out later. What I will do now, though, is put in a new... Or put in one of these films to see if it works. So, let's do that. Let me prop you up somewhere. Can I... There's a good way to... A good way to prop. Can I... Is this good? This is, it's not terrible, but it also isn't good. Now you're probably going to be out of focus, so let's open this box first. Oop, perfect. This is the worst I've ever opened a box. $19 a pack. 
and I bought two monsters at the same time for a total of forty-seven dollars. Polaroid color six hundred film. You can't read that because it's not in focus. So, I'll open up. Oh, and now the air conditioning turned on. Shit. Perfect. The hunt for Bigfoot. I just dropped the other pack on my dog. So, insert this side up. Do not remove this dark slide. So, according to the local constabulatory, constabulary, const, constables, what do you do? So you come over here, you press this, and then plop goes to the outside, and there's a thing in here. Is it? That's interesting. I have no idea when this was last shot. I just found it at a store. Or at like a curio shop. So hopefully this works. Slide in. Did it go in too far? Rollers look pretty clean. Oh! Oh, I felt it move. Guys, this is freaking exciting. This is going up here with my other cameras. <laughs> so, what I will do, I just gotta test it. I gotta test it. So I'm gonna take a picture of my dog, I guess. Take a picture of something. Let's just take a picture of the dog. Indoors, where there's not a lot of light, surely I don't need a neutral density filter for this. So let me take a picture. Maya, prepare to be a cheese. All right, you ready? Come on. Come on, Here, sit. Good girl, stay. Now, let's see it. Frames out, hopefully. Yeah. One would have expected that it would have come out by now. I'll take a picture. And if I this is gonna freaking suck. Bye. Okay, something's clearly gone wrong. Oh! Or not? Why? Well, I wonder why I made that noise earlier. Well, I guess. Now we wait and watch in real time <laughs> as the picture develops. Oh god. Why? Why did it make that noise? Stand up, you lazy bum. Perfect. So far, it's looking awfully black. It does say that it's supposed to take 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, to develop. So I guess I'll just plop back in when that's ready. Well, as you can see from the carnage, something is wrong with this camera. Every single, this is the only frame I was able to get to work. And it's 
horribly overexposed. But that's a good thing, because at least this one came out every single time I put... Hold on, let me pause. Okay, I refilled this film pack with about half the shots. Every And I... Every single time I put this in here, it'll eject the first picture as though it thinks it's the the dark slide, which is fine. That means it works. So it can't be what most people think is the major thing. But then it will never eject the second slide or any slide after that. It's so annoying. People think that it's there's this little piece in here. If I were to drop this. You can see in that back left corner, there's like a little skinny piece of metal that's folded down. People th say that that's the part, that's the part that pushes out the film after it's been taken. It like pushes through this little slot out the thingamajig. Clearly that's not the broken part because it keeps pushing out the dark, the top frame, thinking it's a dark slide, so it works. But people also think that it could be that this roller isn't sticky enough, which I guess, I mean, it just feels like a roller. I don't know. So maybe. And then people thought that maybe it's because this dark slide is usually super flat. Which is why it comes out easily and all these are kind of curved a little bit. But I shoved stuff under, I shoved the uh, dark slide back in under, where is it, like between the frames here, can I focus, eh, whatever, shoved it between the frames here to try and flatten them out so they'll come out easier, and it doesn't work, so I'll give you an example of what's doing, so, boom, and then, this is going to fall forward, take this, plop it in there, Squeeze it in, it's in, shut this, boom, first frame comes out like normal, remove that, throw that over there, and take a picture, nothing happens, the first time, every single time I click that, nothing comes on until, well, oh, there it goes again, not doing it, oh, there you go, and as you heard, the motor runs, these, the rollers spin to push out the new thing, but nothing comes out. I'm not blocking the part where the thing comes out. Nothing comes out. Oh, now it's in the locked stage. Nothing comes out. But every single time, if I do this, I pull it out a little, shove it back in, close it up, boom, first frame comes out. I don't understand. So at the risk, I mean that was $18 down the drain for one overexposed picture. So at the risk of ruining another $18 pack of film, I'm putting in the second pack just in case there was something wrong with this pack for some reason. Because nothing on mine shows anything on how this is supposed to get fixed. Maybe it's an issue with running 600 film instead of the SX-70 film. But really I don't think that would be the issue because they're the same size film and everything. It's just a higher ISO speed. So I'm going to shove in the other box now and hope that it works and that it was just an issue with this one pack of film. Okay, new pack. I've gone ahead and sanded off those nubs because apparently that helps. I open this up. I will shove in. This is so, oh God, so not easy to do with one hand. Shove, shoved, perfect. It is in. Not all the way though. Boom. In. Now, upon closing, it should spit out the first 
spark fly. Boom, set phasers to stun. Excellent. Now, if you'll come with me. Beautiful. This was the subject of the first picture, or the only picture that I was able to get to work. So let me just make sure it's, uh, whatchamacallit. Okay, boom. That's pretty much in focus. So now I take the shot. And of course nothing comes out. I don't know what to do. I think I fixed it. If I press this new button now, well, of course, it's not going to do it on the first one, but if I press it again, wait for it. And that was the third one I, third including the dark slide, I was able to get out. I rebent the pick arm again, so it's less drastic of a bend. But now it seems to work whenever the camera decides to take a picture. I imagine, I guess it's a shutter speed thing. Sorry if I'm shaking. I'm quaking like boots, boot snaking. <laughs> yep, that's replicable. Now let's put the new film back in and I guess go take a picture. Okay, the first time I took this picture, I think it was either directly in the middle or all the way on white, so I'm going to put it all the way on dark to make it underexposed and hope that works. So let me look in here. It looks more or less in focus. And then with a singular hand. Shit. I was pointing the camera over there. <laughs> Well, it didn't take the picture, but that doesn't mean it didn't expose the frame. So, I gotta put this down. Okay, well, weirdly... I mean, I've got the pictures, they do have to develop. But... Who puts their phone here? But, uh... Um, what was I gonna say? Charles. Maggie. Uh, yeah, weirdly I had to, like, open the camera, slightly pull out the cartridge, and push the cartridge back in again to get it to spit out the frame, so... Uh, if the pictures turn out, I don't have a problem doing that, but you saw I got it to replicate being able to push the frame out? I don't know what's going on. About 20 minutes later, and those two frames I just showed you look like this. And I think I know why. And it's because I pulled out the the film cartridge and then like shoved it back in and that made it spit it out i didn't think i exposed the frames to light but i guess i had but and this is a delicious but mere 15 minutes later i went and took the camera outside again to the grill and mind you, from that first batch of film, this was the one that I, this was the only working shot that I got. Second batch, I went out, I, everything worked perfect. It was gorgeous. I opened the camera, it hurt a lot. It's a very painful camera to open. I focused up, aimed right at my subject, pressed shutter, made the noise, spit out the thing perfectly. Spit it out perfectly. Walked inside, waited another 20 minutes, and boom! The result, of course, it's overblown. It's a bright-ass day outside, and this is ISO 600, and I didn't have the neutral density filter on. And I had it directly... Oh, well, it's closed now. But I had the, the exposure wheel directly in the center, so not overexposing, not underexposing. And I got a freaking result! Spit it out perfectly... It's way less overexposed than the original one I took. This is perfect. This is good. This is this is a result. And that's Adam Savage. But this is a result. Which means I have five images left in this here beaut. Yes, eight minus three is five. I have five images left in this here camera. 
and they will be spent. And it was a gigantic mess and waste of money. These are the two differences in the cartridges. The one on the left is the one that came in the camera already, which I assume takes SX-70 film. And this is the new 600 film canister. And they look, or cassette, whatever you want to call them. They look almost identical, color and stuff aside. And who knows if this one was even Polaroid. This could have been like impossible film or something. What does that say? One empty pole. So yeah, I don't even know if this was Polaroid or not. But... The point is, the camera seems to be working now. That's an old picture I took a long time ago. And I'm excited. Because now it's working. Look at that, it's a freaking... There's so much fidelity on that too. It's hard to get the camera to focus on it, but... Like, there's way more... It's way sharper than I expected. But oh my boy, what a whirlwind. I'm think I'm thinking that if like this is very bright because it's super bright outside. But if I take the camera out and take shots not at night, but getting close to night, that they should turn out fine, right? 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 right all right i gotta do this quickly look at this thing i pass it every single day and i want to take a picture of it and never have and also i'm parked in the middle of the one way one lane thing so i gotta well is there anywhere else i can park uh doesn't much look like it i don't know if i'm gonna be able to record myself doing this so i'm just gonna run out and take a picture that thing is impossible to shoot from every angle. It looks bad. So I think this is the one I took of that. And then this one I took of, well, they're kind of past it now, but it was the moon flanked on either side by those things. And yeah, that's what I did. And I have no idea if they'll turn out because it's doing that thing. It's doing a different thing now where if I, I press the shutter, it takes a picture, or it makes the noise like it took a picture. You can hear the mirror slap and whatnot. And then the viewfinder goes dark and then it does nothing. But if I hit the shutter again, then it says, okay, have a nice day and spits the picture out. And that's what happened with both of those. I don't know if it's because I was shooting it at like a, a tilted angle and I have to like shoot sort of straight on in order for it to not do that either way it was very annoying <laughs> so i don't know if it i don't know if it took one i don't know if it exposed the sh the, the the film once per double click or if it exposed it twice per double click it's 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 difficult to know so i guess i'll find out when and if these develop but that's in like 20 minutes or something I mean after a couple minutes with the the grill pictures that worked you were able to see something show up on the thing so hopefully something shows up on the thing if not screwed again and I'll have two blank Polaroids out of the remaining five which means I have three left and as you can see it's sunset time now I'll make sure to pick up again if I end up taking another picture that hopefully works well it's been about 10 minutes and nothing's even shown up on them so I guess those two were screwed also which is disheartening I guess it could be that it's overexposed like a ton which I would get for the moon shot since I was just pointing it directly at the sky but the way I shot the rib thing, it was, it had, it had things in it that weren't very bright, so they should have at least, ah, I'm the worst at this. Alright, I have 
three remaining pieces of film. And wait, when did I get here? Oh, I haven't gone as far as I thought I had yet. Never mind. Uh, what I'm gonna do is do that test that I said I was gonna do, where, well, it's not really exactly that test, but I'm just going to shoot it at this next shot. I'm gonna shoot directly in the center of the exposure wheel, then one far underexposed, one far overexposed. Did I say overexposed twice? You know what I mean. And I'll see what that does. Because if that last, if those two are just overexposed, but I shot those in the middle. This is the scene I'm going to shoot. I'm going to do one. Woo. One middle exposure, one overexposed, one underexposed. This is how much room I have to work with. I am so angry right now. Every single one of those that I just took, they, oh my god, none of them fired. Like the first two, oh, the first two I would click the shutter and it wouldn't even make a noise. And then, uh, or like the viewfinder would go black but it wouldn't make the noise and it wouldn't make the sound of the rotors going to spit the film out. And then, the last one did do that, but it didn't spit the film out. So every single one of these, I had to, oh God, you can see something showing up there, but of course it's gonna be screwed anyway. Oh my God. Uh, the last one, it made the noise, but it didn't spit the film out. So every single one of these, I had to open the camera up and like pull the cartridge out a little bit and shove it back in to have it spit it out. And of course that probably subjected it to light, which ruined it. Oh, <gasps> something, two things. Those are the poles and that's the land in the distance. <gasps> no, 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 something showing up. You can see the boats. Something pretty much not showing up on that one. This, I think, is the last one I took, maybe? Maybe? No, of course, because I was pissed. Damn it, now I don't know which settings I used on which one. The first two, I just kept middle of the road. Of course I did. And then this one, who knows which one this one is. But this seems to be the only one that's coming out. This is so, oh my God, it's a gorgeous camera. But it is so, annoying to use but look at it. something's coming I can feel it hmm. let me give it time to oh man which one was this this must have been yeah because it's this is pointed way down this must be the last one that I took where I set it on the guardrail this is the one that I took the picture and it made the noise like it was going to spit it out, but then didn't spit it out. And then here, at the bottom here, is probably where light leak happened when I pulled the thing out a little bit and shoved it back in so I could spit it out. And this one, I did change the exposure settings to make it a little darker. Huh. How much of an exposure setting change did I do? Let me, I hate, I hate this. I hate opening it up by pulling up on the viewfinder. That's why I said it was hard before to open it because I was opening it from like pulling up this piece because I didn't want to pull it up by this because I saw somebody do that and it broke. And the exposure wheel in the center. I don't think I pushed it all, maybe I did. I don't remember if I pushed it all the way over or just only a little bit over. But this one, for sure, I did underexpose, and it's the only one that came out. Hmm. Well, 
I will come back later and show you that. God, it's a frustrating camera, but it's pretty. Before everyone urinates on me and my ideals, I am not going to give up on this camera just yet because I do recognize that I am the problem because I was the one who decided to run 600 film in it instead of the recommended SX-70 film that you're supposed to use with it. So, I will, this will, well, maybe not this, well, maybe this. This is probably gonna be the last piece that I do for this video, but it's definitely not the last that I'm going to use this camera. Because right now, I'm infuriated that I, <laughs> oh my god, I'm infuriated that I spent so much money and went through so many mistakes and things just trying to get this camera to work, only to end up with three out of a possible 16 frames that actually worked. So. I am infuriated at myself, not the camera. But one day, I will shell out another $18 or whatever for the actual film. And, of course, I'm going to have to... I have to get it online, which means I'm going to have to pay for shipping and stuff, too. And then I'm going to have to wait. God, I hate shopping online. Online shopping is the worst. I'm angry. But just know I'm angry at myself, not at the camera. So, in case this is... No, not in case. This definitely is the last bit of this video. Uh, God. Somebody needs to tell Wilmington how to make roads not bumpy. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>